Really like the manipulations and the way everything was working in this movie. And uh, before you go any further, just want to let you know, spoiler alert, because we're about to drop into the top five guns from Extraction. Welcome back everybody, Clint today with Classic Firearms, here to talk about one of my personal favorite movies, the movie Extraction. This one is a lot of fun and we'll be talking about it here in just a moment, but we're gonna be talking about the top five guns from this movie, but before we roll into that, just a couple of quick words. Some of the content and trademarks we are going to show you in this video are not ours, and this is not sponsored by any other company. We are not affiliated with Netflix or any other studio production in any way. We just wanted to take a deep dive into the firearms they used in the filming of Extraction. So without further ado, let's roll into my number five pick. And for my number five pick, the HK SL8, lightly used, but it had a pretty significant role when it was being utilized by the Bangladeshi colonel, like the SWAT colonel, and uh, bad guy in this movie. And uh, well, he took out one of the main characters that you first thought you was a bad guy, and then they kind of joined sides with uh, Hemsworth as Rake and all that type of stuff. But anyway, we see the SL8 in a sniper role, uh, which is pretty cool in this situation. Now, originally I wouldn't even give the HK SL8 any time whatsoever because the G36, the OG rifle, you can format and create whatever type of system you want. But in this situation, the SL8 that it is, is actually pretty cool. And the reason I say that too is because the SLA is like this like little civilianized wimpy version of what the G36 is for export laws and import and whack stuff like that. But anyway, in this case, set up in the sniper role that it is, very effective and unfortunately, uh, spoiler alert, takes out the homie Saju there, but you know, it's okay. But uh, maybe, maybe we'll see Hemsworth back as Tyler Rake in Extraction 2? I don't know. Anyway, let's roll into my number four pick. I guess what I should have said is it's okay that the Colonel got away with doing what he did because he got it right back. He got absolutely smack dabbed right in the noggin with the SCAR-17. So we know that 7.62 NATO cartridge coming out of, not that one, but this one is effective. How effective? We actually have a video all about that, about what its max effective range is. But anyway, Nick utilizing that gun, she does pretty good work with it. and. It's set up in one of my personal favorite configurations. In fact, we've given it away uh, with a Trijicon VGOG like what she was using. Also, they kind of give you that shooter's perspective, what you're seeing when you look through the scope type of thing, and they got it right from what I could tell at least. I thought that was kind of interesting. So pretty cool that they had it set up like that. And the SCAR-17, again, a, not as much uh, screen time, but we did see it there and uh, it, it did its job by taking out the, the big the big bad colonel. And then moving on to my number three pick, which uh, has probably one of the best reloads I've ever seen. The MP5 SD. I have had the glorious opportunity to mag dump a full auto MP5 SD and a legit one. And it is everything I could ever ask for. Absolutely love it. They should be more available, more plentiful and repeal the NFA. But uh, anyway, but what we see uh, the reload that we see towards one of the ending scenes there uh, with Saju, who obviously isn't dead yet, uh, again, spoiler alert, but um, what we see him dig the muzzle of that thing into that one bad guy's chest, he performs the reload and then takes the guy out. I just thought, I was like, wow, that's pretty funny. Uh, if I was that guy and somebody else's muzzle was on my chest, maybe I'd try to actually like sweep that out or something, or maybe stop from the, you know, the charging handle going forward to chamber that next round. I don't know. I feel like I kind of figured something out, maybe. Also probably would have been panicking pretty bad, so I may have just wound up dead. But at the same time, that reload was pretty awesome. Dug that thing right in. Here, insert fresh mag, come down, done. I'll make sure the mag's actually seated. But anyway, you get it. I thought it was super cool. And uh, also, go to classicfarms.com. You won't regret it. And for my number two pick, the Daniel Defense M4A1, even with the SOP mod stock. I thought that was kind of cool. And he's, and Rake, you know, Hemsworth's character. By the way, I think it's kind of funny that his name is Rake and he killed a guy with a rake in like one of the opening scenes. Irony. But anyway, he's also got one of my favorite optic combos as well. This movie really 
did it for me when it came to the the rifle setups and everything else. Again, the VCOG on the SCAR, love that. And then the ACOG with the forward mounted RMR. Love that setup too that you see a lot on the M4A1, which is heavily used suppressed as well. So I really thought that was kind of a neat thing. You get some close images up of the RIS-2 rail, so it's pretty easily identifiable uh, by looking at the locking system and everything else on this gun. Like I said, heavily used, absolutely does work with this thing. Uh, never fails them, obviously and uh, definitely a big fan of the system overall. And we've got this one set up, which I think would be a pretty cool giveaway. Um, yeah, I mean, I think, I think so. So yeah, just let me know what your thoughts are about that. But uh, anyway, before we roll into my number one pick, I also just wanna give out, uh, they also utilized BCM. BCM was the M4, the CQB11, I think it is, that they used at the beginning of the movie. Wasn't featured as heavily but you could definitely tell it was a BCM. It had the BCM furniture on it. Uh, I do believe at one point you see like the BCM logo and I just thought that's pretty cool that you see some of these actors and you know studios utilizing uh, firearms that aren't just you know mocks, I guess you could say. They're actually utilizing true Daniel defenses. They're using actual rifles and things like that that I thought were pretty cool. I noticed the Tavor was in there. A lot of HKs, UMP, uh, the, uh, the what the 45 that they have as well, which was used as an in, end scene by Nick Suppress to take out like one of the main bad guys, you know. Um, uh, but like I said, Tavor, 249 Saw, there's all sorts of guns out there that, you know, it's like, heck yeah, they're doing it right, right? But uh, when you start to see something a little bit more specific, like BCM, Daniel Defense, I thought that was like, Pretty solid. So anyway, now let's move into my number one pick. My number one pick, it's not exactly this gun. This is a Glock 34, but I actually didn't have one of my Glock 17s laying around today, so whoops. But anyway, the Glock 17. And you might be wondering like, out of all these cool guns you've listed, really a basic Glock 17? Yes, it's the top guns of the movie. And when you see Hensworth's character, Rake, absolutely running and gunning with the Glock all throughout the movie, it was super impressive. Uh, two, th two, I guess, moments I want to bring up. It was the entire one-shot fight scene that took place that was really neat. It transitioned all, looked like at least, that it was all filmed in just one shot, kind of like the car chase as well in the movie. Just really well done. Cinematography I thought was really, really good. And uh, you notice at one point, He's shooting, the body armor is obviously catching the bullets on some of these, and so he's having to hit these guys multiple times in different locations to try to defeat the body armor, or at least maneuver around the body armor. And at one point, guy puts his hand up, and it's a split second to be able to catch this, and as he pulls the trigger, the fingers disappear, and it's like, oh, snap. Attention to detail is at peak there. And then the other one that if you look closely, you catch it, same scene, just a couple of seconds later, uh, he's got more combat enemy combatants uh, that are trying to get him. He's got two guys on him, and one guy actually grabs the gun as he's pulling the trigger, and it causes a malfunction. You see him actually having to use the gun then as a blunt object, uh, and then he utilizes his vest to chamber the next round or at least clear the malfunction. And to get that round that did go off, that you know caused the malfunction there by grabbing it, clearing that, and then being able to get the gun back into the fight. I just thought that was really cool. Whoever the writers were wrote that in. Maybe Hemsworth is actually secretly a big gun guy or something, or maybe it's not a secret. I just don't know. I don't know. All I'm saying is it looked like him and uh, Keanu Reeves maybe hooked up with Taron Butler and actually went and did some pretty cool stuff. At the end of the day, I don't know, but it looked really good and it translated well for me being the big gun guy that I am. I thought the, uh, the gunplay there was really, really well done. So anyway, Glock 17 for my number one pick. Let me know how you guys think the movie was. Again, I thought it was very entertaining. And at this point too, um, if if you haven't realized there's spoilers, there's, there's there's spoilers. The movie's been out for like two or three years now, so it's not it's not my fault, it's on me. So anyway, are you excited for Extraction 2? Because it's obviously it's coming. Apparently he somehow, somehow survived getting shot multiple times and then falling into the water and who knows, but look like it wasn't just a figment of imagination at the end of the movie. Let me know what you think about that. Let's, let's have that discussion. And on top of that, 
what were some of your favorite guns used that maybe I didn't mention? I also saw like the Beretta M12, that old school cool. There was a Uzi, of course, you know, all that type of fun stuff. Let me know down in the comment section below. And while you're at it, head on over to ClassicFirearms.com to get your entries on our current giveaway because, well, we like to give away lots of guns. It could be actually maybe that gun or maybe even that Dandy Defense M4A1 that I had up here uh, and hinted at or it could be that SP5 behind me, or it could be another Barrett, or a Scar. I'm, I'm taking my time on this one though. As you can see, it's starting to grow into something. But what are some other parts and accessories you'd like to see on the Scar before we make it, you know, another giveaway? An ultimate, the ultimate, ultimate Scar giveaway. Let me know. I'll leave it off there. Don't forget to utilize the code word you see at the bottom of the screen to get yourself a couple hundred extra entries. As always, we appreciate you and your business. God bless, and we'll see you next time at ClassicFarms.com.